President Donald Trump said that it certainly looks like US-based Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi is dead. Trump said he was waiting for details from three different investigations to get to the bottom of Khashoggi's disappearance. Remember, Khashoggi did not reappear from the Saudi consulate in Istanbul on October 2nd, where he went to collect documents for his planned marriage. Turkish officials have said they believe the journalist who was a critic of Saudi rulers was murdered inside the building and his body chopped up and removed. Russian President Putin said that Russia did not have enough information about the unexplained disappearance of Saudi journalists to justify spoiling ties with Riyadh. Turkey says Jamal Khashoggi, a Washington Post columnist who was critical of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, was killed by Saudi agents. Saudi Arabia denies the allegation. Putin told a discussion forum in the Black Sea resort of Sochi that Moscow did not really know what had happened in the case. One of Afghanistan's most powerful security officials was killed on Thursday when a bodyguard opened fire following a meeting in the governor's compound in the southern province of Kandahar. General Scott Miller, the top U.S. commander in Afghanistan, was uninjured in the attack. The Taliban claimed responsibility, saying they had targeted both Miller and Razek, who had a fearsome reputation as a ruthless opponent of the insurgents. Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani encouraged voters to participate in the upcoming parliamentary election. In an address to the nation, he added that holding the election will be a victory for the Afghan people, security forces and democracy. The elections for the lower house of parliament are due to take place on Saturday, but preparations have been dogged by chaotic organization and allegations of widespread fraud. There are also worries that polling stations will be attacked. Thousands of pensioners marched in central Paris over President Manuel Macron's reforms that they say are eating away at their pensions. Pensioners have long protested the passage of increased taxes on salaries and pensions that go forward, that go towards financing social security. The rise in the so-called CSG taxes has affected all earners, including pensioners. The government has also announced that pensions will only increase by 0.3% in 2019 and 2020, which is a much smaller increase than inflation. Honduran troops and police were seen blocking a migrant caravan from crossing the border from Honduras into Guatemala. Migrants were seen trekking through a jungle area to avoid authorities. President Donald Trump has threatened to deploy the military and close the southern U.S. border as Hondurans and Salvadorans joined thousands of migrants in Guatemala hoping to travel north. Britain's Duke and Duchess of Sussex participated in Fluro Friday on Australia's iconic Bondi Beach, raising awareness for mental health. The event organized by surfing community group called One Wave Tackles Mental Health Issues in an Engaging Way. The royal couple took part in a group chat with members. The Duke and Duchess then greeted members of the public as they made their way along Bondi Beach. Britain's Prince Harry left a royal fan in tears of joy by hugging her during a visit to Melbourne's Royal Botanic Gardens. Prince Harry and his wife Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, are on their first international tour since marrying in May and are travelling to Australia, New Zealand and the South Pacific Islands of Fiji and Tonga. According to local media, crowds began amassing around 4am to get the best vantage points for the royal couple's arrival. The U.S. Mega Millions jackpot climbed to nearly $1 billion. This is the largest ever for the contest and the second biggest U.S. lottery on record. The potential winning are so large that many stores saw a steady stream of people eager to buy tickets. While some players fantasized about spending their winnings on a trip to the heat, the others said they'd pay off their debt. A 
series of politically charged portraits of U.S. President Donald Trump and his inner circle have been appearing on the streets of Los Angeles. The words usually seen plastered onto walls and bus stops are the brainchild of acclaimed guerrilla street poster artist Robbie Connell. The art depicts everyone from Trump himself to key members of his cabinet and his most senior advisors. The portraits are always in an unflattering light and with a biting caption of political commentary. Conservative Hindu groups returned to the Indian Hill Temple, Shabrimala, to block women from entering for a second day. For centuries, the Shabrimala Temple in Kerala state has banned women and girls between the ages of 10 and 50 from entering the holy site last month. La India's Supreme Court ruled the ban infringed on the right to worship. Since then, the case has become a focal point for women's rights in India. A century-old heritage steam engine has been attracting tourists, including foreign nationals, to India's northern Shimla city. The 130-year-old steam engine that runs coaches on narrow gauze was restarted again by rail authorities in a bid to attract tourism. The train carrying 25 tourists and two coaches travelled for about 20 kilometres from Shimla to Ketli Ghat. The steam engine runs on the Kalka Shimla line and has been awarded World Heritage status by UNESCO in 2008. Contemporary artist Grayson Perry brought his brand of unabashed quiche to Paris. He presented his first French solo exhibition to the media dressed as his female alter ego Claire. The exhibition entitled Vanity, Identity and Sexuality includes prints, pots and tapestries in bright and busy motifs which question class and intellectual snobbery. Perry says his work is more like arts and crafts than fine art and that he enjoys teasing the fine art world with his large garish tapestries. And the two etchings at the back, I do love them back. 